saw a tweet earlier from Rocky Field here. I was going to ask you what was going on with Rocky anyway, but then I saw the tweet. He was responding to someone who said he was in the running to fight Billy Joe Saunders on December the 5th. And he said, oh, it can't be me. I haven't spoken to Eddie for about a year. He hasn't contacted me about any fights. Um, it must be quite frustrating for him especially, but I guess for you as well, that having won a WBA bell out in Germany, achieved quite a big thing in doing that. It, he hasn't pushed on from there. There hasn't been the opportunities for him. Yeah, it has been difficult. I think Rocky's one of them fighters where he's probably risk-reward doesn't balance out quite. He definitely punches harder than his record. So just every time I look at his record, I think, how has he not knocked more people out? <laughs> so Because, because he, he hits so hard. Um, but, you know, I, I, I honestly thought this this lockdown situation and the way the fights have had to be made has is, is created some great fights and it's created matchups what we probably never would have got if if it wasn't for this situation. And I honestly thought that Rocky versus John Ryder might have come up. Yeah. There was talk about it on social media. It made sense in from from our point of view because we're struggling getting Rocky a big fight. From John's point of view because they was going to struggle getting foreign opposition in and out of the country and, and get a big name. And he's got that loss on his record to Rockus, so he gets the opportunity to reverse it. So it made sense to me, but like, like you say, it, nothing's been mentioned. Um, Rock, Rock, Rocky Box last on an MTK show, they, they got him out on one of their own shows to keep him busy. Um, I think he's promotionally free um, at the moment. I'm not I'm not 100% sure, but I think he's pro promotionally free. So, um, you know, we'll just... It's one of them situations. It's just it's tough because, like you say, he has been there. He's been he's he's, he's had a world title, and sort of getting another opportunity at his age is difficult, you know. And um, I'm hoping that so I obviously like everybody. I want the crowds to be back, and I want everything to resume back to normal. Um, and I think maybe when it does, then that might be when some opportunities arise for, for Rocker. What's your approach when a fighter's in that situation? Because it's similar to Jack Catterall as well, although he's got that light at the end of the tunnel, at least. But they're both waiting for a big fight and you've got to keep them motivated in the gym every day without that date at the end of it. How, how do you do that? How do you approach it? Well, I've not actually had to do that at the minute with Rocky because if anyone fo follows him on social media, he's just spent about a month in Dubai um, <laughs> right, okay. with, with his family. He's, you know, when... Uh, me and my missus have said the same thing during this situation if you could do something like that with if they've got young young kids and they don't understand why people have had to be locked in the houses and stuff and can't live the normal day-to-day -day lives so he's blessed to be in a, in a position where he's been able to do that um you know he's so so i've not had to deal with that everyday situation with rocker he's had his his mind's been sort of relaxed a little bit with his he's took the opportunity um to have the bit of time off with his family and, and basically watch his kids grow up which is an ideal situation for, for a dad of, of young kids um jack is in like you say he's in a different part of his career where he's sort of just coming over the midway part i'd say and um and he's only just waiting for this big opportunity and he's got another five or six years and and he's got a newborn you know he's got a baby on the way which is due, I think she, I think Lauren's due in January. So everything's sort of brand new for him. And, and it's like this is the first part of the next bit of his life. And um, and I just want him, to, I, I want the, the stars to align to fall in place for him. Because, you know, like you say, Rocky has been a world champion and he's had that opportunity and, he, and he's earned good money. Jack's not had that opportunity yet. And, and I'll tell you one thing, Dan. You will not meet a more dedicated athlete than Jack Carroll. He has been through all this. When, when I looked at his record the other day, including the O'Hara Davies fight, which was the final eliminator, he's had three fights in two years. And he has barely been out of the gym for a day. He has literally been in the gym, keeping his tools sharp, helping the other lads out with sparring, um, helping other people from other gyms sparring particularly with Akib and Carl Frampton during their fights in, in, in lockdown. He's done a lot of rounds with them too. Um, a lot of tech stuff as well, where they, they help bring each other on. But, um, but, but he's a lovely kid, but 
one of the most dedicated athletes I've ever come across. Now, I listened to you earlier on the um, Fight is Right podcast. Um, great podcast, by the way, for anyone watching. Um, Tunde Ajayi and Spencer Fearon doing a cracking job. Um, and you talked a lot about Oliver Harrison, who was, of course, your mentor and your predecessor as their head trainer at the gym as well. Being yeah. that you're in that situation, you are training in that gym every day, you must be constantly thinking of him. Is that a good thing in that he's still there for you or is it tough sometimes? Of course. Oh, of course it's tough. Um, but the, the, the whole reason I'm able to do this is because of him. The lessons what he taught me day in, day out. You know, I spoke with them guys about me having sort of two or three years early on and it was basically, I had his stole attention so the amount of stuff I learned from him in that situation was worth 10 years anyway and I had 10, 10 full years with him so um, so for me to I, 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 I've said this a few times but I sound I remind myself of him so much with the terminologies and the phrases what I use because that's what he instilled into me and drilled into me and uh, so but I love that I, I don't I don't say stuff and go, oh God, I sound like all I say it and I go, oh that's it's, that's brilliant because I sound like all. And um, you know, his son, Lerone, is he's training with us now. And you know, even facially he looks like his dad. And um, you know, it, that that in itself is is nice, you know, to see his son and and, and now I get the opportunity, you know, he's not, you know cruelly he's never going to get the opportunity to, to to do what he should be doing with his with his son um, you know the only thing I can do is try my best to replicate what what, what he would have gone and done with him when you look at your current stable of fighters the guys you're working with do you see anything in any of them that makes you think they could follow you in the same way you followed Oliver Oh, that's a great question. Thanks, mate. Um, I probably, I, I probably, I want definitely Jack Carroll. He, he's probably got that the temperament for it, and um, because because I'm pretty laid back, as you can see, lay in bed, just chilled <laughs> out doing it. <laughs> yeah. Oliver, Oliver was just the epitome of laid back, and didn't want any force, just wanted to crack on with the job and do it with minimum force and the minimum stress. Um, and, that, and that's my sort of thing as well. Um, Jack's very much like that as well. He's, he's a laid back character. Um, and, and I'd probably say Akib, Akib Fiaz is, um, is difficult to tell at the moment because he's so young and, and brand new to it. But I've got a feeling that as he matures and progresses, he's going to be, he, he is an absolute sponge. Like I, like Carl Frampton said in an interview, I seen once he was talking about him being a sponge. He absorbs everything, he, he, and any every single thing you say to him, give him a, a bit of an explanation of why he takes it on board, and he'll drill it and drill it and drill it until he's got it. So, um, and you can't ask for anything more than off somebody than that. So, um, so yeah, for, out, out of everyone, I think them two would probably be the uh, the ones who would say we well, well, might end up going doing it. Tommy's Tommy's already. Dipping his toe in by the look of it, he's um he's he's, he's left the gym in in um, body at the moment, but he's always there in his spirit and uh, and I've, he's going to start coming down, helping us out in the corners because the gym the the stables are busy now. Me and Nigel a few times have had to split, and Nigel's had to go and do one corner in one place while I'm in a different one. So um so Tommy. He's, um, he's going to start helping us out in the corner and stuff like that and especially with the bigger fights when his world title fights and you're allowed three in the corner somebody's going to come on board and uh, just debag as many people as he can <laughs> yeah fulfilling his vital role there exactly uh, great stuff and just before I let you go just tell us how your family's getting on obviously lockdown and everything else has been challenging for everyone and, and you guys are notoriously close knit so how's that worked out so yeah. far mate this is my worst nightmare, as you can imagine, because I hate being away from the family. So this today isn't bad at all because I'm only away for two days. Yeah. But these these scenarios, it's tough because especially when we've had fights back to back where I've had to go into isolation for five days and then come on for two and then away for five, come on, come on for two, away for five. It's difficult, real difficult. It's difficult to manage the gym as well. So 
it would be, you know, I'm lucky in the sense that I've got nice sweat that helps me out and we can sort of work it between us. And and lately, Asam Fiaz, Akib's brother, has been helping us out a lot as well because we've been so busy. So I can't imagine what it'd be like for, for a trainer who would have two fighters on two separate weeks apart, but would have to be isolated away for a week. He just, he's, he's difficult and, you know, maybe it needs looking at from, from a, uh, promoter's point of view to see whether different situations can be can be brought in but but I hate being away so the, to answer your question I hate being away from home I miss my family um, but you know it is what it is I've just got to do it. it's my job and presumably they're incredibly supportive as well it always seems that way mate technology so so I'm ba- when I come off the phone to you I'll be on the FaceTime to Mikey or Liv or Colleen because that's what you can do. So even though we're not there in body, we're, we're there and we can speak to each other. So, God, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even like to imagine what that'd be like if um, if we didn't have that luxury. Well, I'm glad you could you can still maintain that context. And obviously, you'll be back home before you know it. It's not not far off now. That's it, mate. I'll be back home. We'll go back. We'll, we'll go straight back because Nigel's got um, got to work on Monday. He's still <laughs> putting fires out for a living. He's still putting fires out. Metaphorically, he walks around setting fires, right. and then usually me or one of the other lads, Kerry Casey's really good at it. So Kerry walks around. Nigel sort of causes havoc and sets fires everywhere, and Kerry goes around putting them out. But that's metaphorically speaking. Yeah. What just, just in to actual clarify. fact? <laughs> it, in, in actual fact, Nigel's got to still put fires out, so he's putting fires out on Monday. So we're gonna go. We're gonna head straight back um, after the fight on Saturday. Spend the day on Sunday with our families, and then back to the ground on Monday, mate. Great stuff. All well, the very best of luck, obviously, for Saturday night. We'll be watching. Yeah, Thank then, you, I'm mate. Sure I'll speak to you again soon. Enjoy the rest of your time in isolation. Top man. Cheers, pal. Cheers, mate. Take care.